more snow. And we haven't even had any yet. But I'm always working ahead of time because you have to be ready for when the season changes. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to make the snowman asking for more snow. I was getting low on maple and the only boards left were not wide enough for this snowman. So I laid the patterns out on a piece of ash I found in my stash. Hmm, yeah, that rhymes. I drilled the pilot holes for the interior cuts with, I believe, a 332nd drill bit. This was large enough to accommodate the scroll saw bit, yet small enough to fit inside the various spaces I would be cutting. I measured the eyes and they were one quarter inch in diameter, so I made those holes full sized. I'm making four of these snowmen, so it was worth the time it took to switch to the larger drill bit. Now it's time to get started on the scroll saw. I had a number 9 Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw from my last project, so I flipped up the tension lever and plucked the blade to ensure it was still tight. It produced a clear musical note, so I knew it was good to go. Then I loosened the tension lever and the top blade holder and lifted the arm to thread the blade through the pilot hole for my first cut. Ash is quite hard and none of these cuts are complex, so I thought a number 9 blade was the best choice. The main factors I use when choosing a blade size are the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the shapes I will be cutting. If you'd like more information on the subject, I'll leave a link to my video on blade size choice on the screen and in the description. Along with my Pegas scroll saw, I use two accessories all the time. The first is a lighted magnifier, which helps greatly with patterns with lots of detail. I'm not using the light at this time because it tends to wash out the video picture. The second accessory is a foot switch which allows me to start and stop the saw blade without having to take a hand off the material I'm cutting. The first few cuts were routine enough that there wasn't anything to comment on, but cutting the snowman scarf is going to require some skill. I cut from the pilot hole to one of the corners and then, rather than start making the corner with the blade facing the direction it was, I backed the blade to the pilot hole. Then I swiveled the workpiece 180 degrees and backed the blade through the cut I had just made into the corner. Sometimes the blade will back into the corner, sometimes it won't. This is more likely to work with a smaller blade, but it's always worth a try. The reason I do this is that it's easier to turn the blade to the next direction I want to cut with the point facing in this direction. I wasn't able to get back into the corner this time, but I can go back and clean up the corner later. I cut along the long line for one of the sides of the shape, and when I came to the next turn it was easy to do because there was a curve rather than a sharp angle for this turn. The bottom of the scarf was a short line, followed by another curved turn and another long line. There was another 90 degree turn at the top of that line. I used the curve from the cut I just made, plus a little of the waist area, to give me the room I needed to back into this third corner. Once again, I couldn't get as far as I would have liked, but I was able to get to a good place to make the turn. Once I cut across the fourth side, the waste piece popped out. Then I had plenty of room to maneuver to clean up those two top corners. You develop a sensitive touch over time, and I could feel the blade was getting dull because it was taking longer to cut, and I was getting a little extra vibration from the blade. The cut I was working on wasn't a large one, so I thought I'd finish it and then replace the blade before starting the next cut. But this girl saw on the blade had other ideas. You can see that the blade came loose from the lower blade holder and I was able to stop the saw quickly by taking pressure off the foot switch. Even so, the blade was badly bent and I needed pliers to pull it from the wood. But since I was ready to replace it anyway, it was no loss. The next section I'm going to do will be this snowflake shape in the middle of the snowman's upper body. It's an odd shape, but not difficult, so I took a look at it before deciding how to approach the cut. I drilled the pilot hole right in the middle, and after threading the blade through it, I cut to one of the long vertical lines. I cut the Y shape near the top of the snowflake, then cut to finish the top. There are several ways to proceed with this shape. I moved back to the middle, then followed the outside vertical line to the bottom of the snowflake. When I got to the bottom, I followed the curve, then came back on the other parallel vertical line. This curve is a little tight for a number 9 blade in this thickness of such hard wood, so I took my time making the turn. Scroll sawing almost always requires patience, just more sometimes than others. Once I completed the turn, I followed the line up the middle. It would require very tight turns to make those cuts on either side of the center, so I thought it best to clear that uh, center column first. 
Now we'd approach all those short branch-like cuts from the open waste area in whatever direction was the easiest flow. Looking at the snowflake as if it was a tree with a trunk and branches, it made sense to cut the trunk, then the largest branches, and then go back for the smaller ones. It's time to move on to the letters spelling out more snow. Depending on the type of items you want to make on your scroll saw, you may find yourself cutting out letters frequently. I've cut patterns with all sizes of letters, and I would consider these to be medium-sized. Therefore, these will not be difficult for me to cut. The pattern determines for me whether I will cut on the line, on the inside of the line, or the outside of the line. For letters, I almost always cut on the inside of the line. The reason for this is that the letters, of necessity, are usually placed close to each other. This means that if you cut on the outside of the lines, you will end up placing the letters closer together than cutting on the line or the inside of the line. Cutting on the inside ensures adequate spacing to keep the letters from touching one another. The letter M is a little tricky to cut because some of the angles are very small and it's difficult to follow the lines and get a sharp point in some places. When I come to one of those, rather than trying to make an impossible turn, I keep going, make the turn in the waste material, then come back to the next line. It's probably more difficult to explain than to do. The next two letters, the O and the R, are each cut in two parts to prevent the middle sections from falling out and ruining the look of the letter. Both of these letters require careful cutting because of this. They are perfect examples of needing to cut on the inside of the lines since the gaps are smaller than the spaces left between the letters. I cut from the pilot hole to one of the points of the half circle, ease up on the blade a bit, pivot the workpiece, and then start cutting again. If you are new to this, the most important thing is to stay inside the line. If you drift off a little, that's okay, as long as the drift is into the waste area. You can always go back later and clean up the cut if it becomes noticeably off. Once again, I plucked the blade to ensure it was tight and then was ready to move on to the exterior cut for the snowman. Cutting the ash will be slow because it's so hard, so I need to remind myself to take my time and let the blade do the work. The temptation on cuts like these is to put extra pressure on the blade to speed up the process, but extra pressure doesn't do that. It just causes the blade to flex and produce a cut that is not 90 degrees to the table. It can also cause the blade to overheat and burn the wood, or it can cause the blade to break. None of these outcomes is desirable. With the exterior cut completed, I peeled off the pattern. It's always exciting to see that first reveal of the wood after you're done cutting, and since the only other part left is to cut that simple round base, this item is already almost done. Although cutting a circle would seem to be simple, it does take skill to get it as smooth as possible. You need to keep the wood blank turning as smoothly as you can. Otherwise, you may end up with slight variations that may or may not be noticeable when you're done cutting. You can smooth these out with a little sanding, but it's not easy to sand a perfect circular shape either. It's best to cut the circle nearly perfect as you can to begin with. I think you can see there's a little rough spot on the edge of the circular base. These rough spots almost inevitably appear when you have to start and stop a cut on a curve, and I'll have to carefully smooth that out with a piece of sandpaper or a disc sander. I set the snowman on top of the base for a sneak peek at what the project would look like when completed. I just need to glue the two pieces together and add a finish. I used a quarter sheet of 120 grit sandpaper to smooth the edges of the round base. This way there won't be sharp to the touch. The glue up is as simple as can be. I squeezed a bead of glue onto the bottom of the snowman, spread it around with my fingertip, then set the snowman on the base. I ensured the grain on the top piece was running in the same direction as the base. Wood expands and contracts with changes in temperature and humidity, and a cross-grain situation could cause problems. This minimizes that possibility. There's no way to clamp this efficiently, so I'll rely on gravity to hold the snowman in place while the glue dries. There you have the completed More Snow project. This is the first, and I have three more started, but I wanted to finish the video, and I needed to just want to do that. Let me know what you think of this project and video with any comments or suggestions you may have. The comments are important to me, and I reply to every one. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. But you don't have to wait until then. The next suggested video to watch is showing on the screen right now.